What's up everyone? So today we're going to look at two different integrals and I didn't write out uh, the integrals specifically yet but later on you'll see what those are and we're going to continue working on the King's property in order to help us solving the integral quickly and the integrals that we're looking for will actually have the form of course from some a value to b value and here we uh, are assuming that a and b could be any uh, extended real numbers meaning we can also include negative infinity to positive infinity it doesn't have to be definite integral uh, of the function uh, 1 over 1 plus some other function f of x dx and again uh, f of x is uh, is different in um, in the two problems that we're looking for or the two different the rows that we're looking for so before we move on and look at those uh, integrals and try to evaluate them please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so that you can also uh, find out more of my other videos and of course turn on the not notification so that uh, you won't miss my new videos either Okay, here we go. So here is the first integral that we're going to do. Uh, again, it will have this form. So we can just simply uh, talk about what f of x is in our setup and also what will be the interval that we're looking for. So first one, let's start with something that's, I would say, pretty easy, which is the tangent function easy right so let's make it a little bit more challenging we'll raise it to the nth uh, uh, the nth power some people write like this and of course it's okay to write the n in uh, right after the uh, tangent sign um, it's just personal habits but for clarification I would just put it like this then of course we need to talk about the uh, the interval that we're, uh, we're doing. Where's upper bound and where's the lower bound. So here we're going to take from 0 to 2, not 2 pi, pi over 2. So should we include those two? Of course not. We know that the tangent is the, uh, cannot be defined at pi over 2. And in fact, it does not really matter uh, if we include 0 or not as we are taking the integral of it because technically if we're just trying to integrate uh, what, uh, the what so called area of one single point or we can call it the singleton uh, we would not be uh, uh, we will not get any area back or in other words if we try to remove that one particular value in general, oh, in general, we're not going to change the value in our um, evaluation. But since we want to keep it, uh, keep it nice, we'll just set it into um, uh, like this uh, re by removing that point. So how are we going to do it? First, let's take a look at the integral. So now we have the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Uh, and I'm going to put the dx outside. So we have 1 over 1 plus tangent x raised to the nth power. Tangent x raised to the nth power. Like this. So it looks very difficult, right? And in fact, if we're just trying to use uh some of the uh common methods that we usually use such as the uh, di method or even try to do well uh, uh u substitution it doesn't really go uh, it doesn't really look that nice in this case because we still will end up with another integral that's very hard to take 
the integral or antiderivative of it because it is not something that is very basic or common that we used to have. So this is why we are going to use the King's property. Here we go. First, let's call this integral, give it a name, let's say i. Then by the King's property, we see that, uh, let me write out by King's property. Uh, we see that this integral, which is still the same integral by the property itself, will now be coming 1 plus 1, uh, 1 over 1 plus uh, the function f, but instead of putting f of x, we now have f of a plus b, the lower bound plus the upper bound, and then minus the variable x that we're, uh, uh, that we're um, taking uh, integral with respect to. So if we are going to substitute this part back into here, we will now get the integral, of course, from zero to the power of two of the function one over one plus. Now, replacing x by a plus b minus x, where a is our lower bound zero, b is the upper bound power over two, we have tangent instead of tangents of x, we have tangents of pi over two minus x, and then raise it to the nth power, like this. And if we pay attention carefully, this is what we're going to get. Notice that tangents of pi over two minus x, if we imagine a right triangle like this, where the angle is what we call x, which is the, um, the uh, variable that we're changing, then tangent x is going to give us this part, uh, a over b. So tangent x is, uh, tangent of x is a over b, where tangent of pi over two minus x, pi over two is just 90 degrees. Uh, yeah, if we're thinking like in geometry, we will know that um, pi over two minus x or 90 degrees minus x will be the, complement, uh, the complementary angle right here. Meaning, if we are thinking of tangent of the complementary angle, we get b over a. But b over a is, since it's the complementary angle, we also know that this uh, tangent of this angle is same as cotangent of the original angle. In other words, we can rewrite the denominator into one plus cotangent of x. And don't forget, we have to raise the whole thing to the n power right here before we add the one back. Good. So why does it matter or how is it going to help us? Besides, we know that tangents and cotangents are, uh, uh, we we'll have, you know, we'll have the complementary angles, such as what we have seen, tangents of x, the uh, cotangents of uh, nine, uh, pi over two minus x is equal to cotangents of x. We also have another um, basic no, trigonometric uh, property that says cotangent is also known as one over tangents. Uh, in other words, cotangent is the reciprocal of it. So, how is it going to help us? Well, since we know that it's the reciprocal of tangent uh, x, we can now multiply both top and bottom. In other words, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by tangent of x raised to the nth power, such that now, we will no longer have the 
just cotangents in the denominator. So let's see what's going to happen. If we do that, the numerator now becomes tangent of x to the nth power, where the denominator is, of course, we said that cotangents and tangents will cancel out, meaning that we end up with 1. And then 1 times tangents is tangents, and then again, we have n copies, so we raise it to the nth power. So we get the form from uh, the integral from 0 to power 2 of the function tangents uh, uh, to the n power of x over 1 uh, tangents of, uh, to the n power of x plus 1. And of course, the denominator, we can just rewrite as 1 plus tangents of x raised to the n power, meaning that we actually get something like this of 1 plus tangent uh, to the n power of x and then again the numerator is just tangent uh, to the n power of x like this good but after everything that we have done we're actually still talking about the same integral in other words this integral is just the uh, integral i that we are starting off so we actually have i in two different forms and what can we do is now if we add them together let, let's see what's going to happen by adding the two forms of i together of course the left hand side is just i plus i which gives us two copies of i two i now the right hand side we see that the two integrals are in the same interval. They both start at 0, they both end at power over 2. So it means that we can just add the two functions inside of the integrals together. More importantly, both expressions have the same denominator. 1 plus tangents of x raised to the n power. So in other words, when we put the two functions together, we just need to add the numerators together as well. So what do we have now? The numerator for the first uh, expression is just one. Where the second expression is saying tangent of x raised to the n power. Great. So if we pay attention carefully, we see that now the numerator is the same as the denominator. And we also know that both of them, of course they have the same expression, will not be zero or infinity. In fact, it is always a positive uh, value, meaning that there is uh, there's nowhere that is undefined uh, between zero to power over two. So, we can now cancel them out such that we get the very simple integral an integral from 0 to power for 2 of just 1 times dx or dx so I bet everyone can now take the integral of it and clearly this is just uh, same as a rectangle from 0 to power for 2 with the height 1 so this area is just simply power for 2. And finally, since this is the sum of the two integrals, 2i, by dividing both sides by 2, we get that i is power for 4. And therefore, this integral is equal to power over 4 here. So here is the first example of how we are, going, uh, how we are using the King's property to uh, rewrite uh, an integral into some nice form so that we can just solve or evaluate the integral indirectly instead of trying to uh, find out the antiderivative and then do a substitution. 
okay? Good. I'll leave the part two for tomorrow.